Tools of Oral Communication Oral communication is different from written communication. It is an event rather than a manuscript. What we say in two makes a difference when we speak. There are five elements of effective oral communication. Pauses, pacing, volume, inflections, and gestures. These five elements greatly aid you in preaching before a congregation. The tools of oral communication we're going to discuss in this video are pauses, pacing, volume, inflection or pitch, and gestures. The first tool we're going to consider is pausing. Pausing are those little stops that we put in our speech to emphasize things in our speaking. We use pauses when we want an idea to sink in, to divide one idea from another idea, and to indicate what follows should be heard and remembered. We misuse or overuse pauses when we use them do in a way that detracts from the meaning of what we're saying, when we run ideas together without pauses that should be kept separate, and when we cause people to become distracted from our main idea by our pausing. Let me give you an example of this. I have what I call homiletical diseases or mistakes in speaking that we're going to illustrate for you. Here's an example of a disease. It's called Shatner's disease. I named it after William Shatner, the actor who played Captain Kirk on Star Trek. When, this, when the speaker pauses without thought at the last two words of what he's saying, the last two words, words. Let's see an example. I'm losing command. I'm losing the Enterprise. The ship is going on and on. I'm alone. Alone. I've lost command. I've lost the Enterprise. <sighs> Don't overuse your pauses or use them randomly. Instead, vary your pauses and make them what you mean to emphasize. Here's another example of misused pauses, what I call homiletical disease number two, which is sing song. The speaker gets in a rhythm and going without realizing what he is doing. He starts to sound like he's singing a song. What is the means and the message? Paul is negative and backwards. He starts at the end and continues back to the beginning. Ask how will this happen? It just doesn't normally happen. The second tool of oral communication is pacing. Pacing is the speed of our speech, how fast we talk. Pacing is what we do when we talk fast or slow. Remember, keep your pacing varied. Don't talk fast all the time or slow all the time. And use pacing to create tension or to bring calm to an audience. Do your speaking fast or slow intentionally. Homiletical disease, disease number three is fast talking. Notice what happens when pacing is ignored and the speaker speaks as fast as he can. This is a recording of a professional fast talker. The relation between members of the company association, which is registered as the company under the company's act. Secretary of State is the loan is made by him under Section 79 of the Housing Association Act 1985. The, homes of the relation between members of the company association, which is registered as the company under the company's act. Secretary of State is the loan is made by him under Section 79 of the Housing Association Act 1985. The, homes of the relation between members of the company association, which is registered as the company under the company's act. Secretary of State is the loan is made by him under Section 79 of the Housing Association Act 1985. The homes. Homiletical disease number four: the turtle. This is when the speaker speaks slowly all the time God has sent you ministers and we are to preach 
He is also sending each of you to support this work. The third tool of oral communication is volume. How loud we speak makes a difference to how well we are heard. Homiletical disease number five, soft talking. In order to sound profound, the speaker softens at the end of every sermon line. Evangelism is another matter. Here too often we see only the way not to lose is to not play. Money, time, these things are And the opposite of that is loud talking. The preacher thinks the people are not listening, so he tries to yell it into people's heads. You have to play to win. That is what people say, is it not? That you have to play to win. But there's another truth. And that other truth is that the way not to lose is not to play. Do you get that? Do you understand that? Are you hearing me? The fourth tool of oral communication is pitch. That's controlling whether you go low or high notes of our voice. Controlling low and high notes makes us effective. Remember, speaking in a high pitch that's called up-talking makes us sound uncertain. But speaking at a low pitch that is down-talking makes us sound demanding. Here's another homiletical disease. Number seven, up-talking. It's when the speaker makes every statement go up at the end. Like a question? You know what I mean? Here's an example from a teenage girl. Well, I was thinking that maybe we could, like, go to dinner and then the movies after my So, does anybody here know the answer? Anyone? Anyone? Holly? Uh, e equals mc squared. Uh, was that a question or an answer? I couldn't tell by the pitch of your voice. The fifth tool of oral communication is gestures. That's what we do with our hands and our bodies as we speak. Here's some things to keep in mind about gestures. First of all, keep your gestures small. Don't wave the air. Avoid threatening gestures, such as pointing the fingers or shaking fists at people. In fact, don't point with your whole hand at people. Point to yourself if you're going to point to someone. Use the open hand with the fingers pointed inward when you gesture. Keep your hands off your face as you gesture. Gesturing from the abdomen, pointing inward, not outward, at people. Here's some examples of bad gesturing. Homiletical disease number eight, the tree. The speaker walk, rocks back and forth, but he never uses his arms. We have to remember that the Lord holds out his hand to us. He holds it out to us and says that if we are in his hand, nothing can take us away. There is nothing that can move us from his hand as he holds us there. As the great song says, he has the whole world in his hand. Homiletical disease number nine, wandering hands. The speaker says one thing, but his hands are saying another. Just remember as it says in the song, we have got to be still and know that he is God. We have to remember how great the love of God is. How Immense, how expansive, how huge, how just infinite is the love of God. A carpenter keeps his tool sharp so that his work will be easier. Learn to keep your tool sharp and you will be more effective in your preaching.